Hey, I'm the Loopy Alchemist, and it has been about six months, so it is about time that I made another video to let everyone know that I am still alive. Well, today's topic is going to be the Eldamary Dominion, and by that I mean the state that the Thalmor calls themselves during Skyrim. Now, the question is, is it a paper tagger? And just to clarify, by paper tagger, I mean... Is it actually as strong as we might think it is? And even though there is no question that it is a very powerful state, I think it might not quite be the juggernaut that everyone seems to make it out to be. Now, before we really go into this, we should probably just give a brief recap of what exactly the Aldmeri Dominion is in this form and who the Thalmor are. Now, they can sort of be best described as a very radical segment of Altmer High Elves, and they were around for a long time, but no one really seems to take them seriously until the Oblivion Crisis, and that's the crisis during the game Oblivion, when Mayrun's Dagon tries to take over Nern and a bunch of Daedra invade, and very nasty stuff happens. Anyways, when the Somerset Isles is just getting completely overrun by Daedra, the Thalmor are the faction that's the most able to deal with it within the Somerset Isles, and that gets them a lot of support. And later on, of course, with the Septim Dynasty being done, uh, with the death of Martin Septim, the Empire is very weakened, very divided, and the Somerset Isles end up breaking away from the Empire. Now, of course, this is all just extremely, extremely simple. Eh extremely simplified. It is way more complicated than this, but again, this is just the uh, Coles Notes version. So, once the High Elves and the Somerset Isles break away, soon the Bosmer end up joining up with them, and this is done mainly through the means of a sort of coup, and a few years later the same thing sort of happens in elsewhere. And, of course, this does not sit very well with the Empire, but the Empire is very weak and can't do much about it. Now, eventually, we get up to the Fourth Era, and of course, the Fourth Era happens right at the end of Oblivion, but anyways, this is a few years on. Again, I'm not giving exact dates, because abbreviated version. So... The Thalmor go into the Imperial City and present the Emperor Titus Mead II with this huge laundry list of demands, which includes stuff like a massive gold tribute, disbanding the blades, and banning the worship of Talos, and ceding a massive portion of Hammerfell to the Eldmeri Dominion. And of course, he says no. So, the Thalmor rip the sheet off the cover of this cart they brought, which they said was tribute, but it turns out to be the heads of all the blades who were stationed within their territory. So this kicks off the Great War, and it does not go very well for the Empire. Um, on top of a bunch of other disasters, the Imperial City actually ends up getting sacked, but the Empire does manage to fight them off. They eventually inflict a massive defeat on the Thalmor with the Battle of the Red Ring in the Imperial City itself. If you want to learn more about this, there's actually a video I made about it many, many years ago with absolutely terrible production values, and it's probably borderline unwatchable, even worse than this video probably is, but anyways, it is out there if anyone is so inclined. Anyways, so after this, Titus Mead signs the White Gord Concordat with the Old Mary Dominion, which is the peace treaty. And many people do think that, okay, this isn't a very good treaty, but he was kind of forced to sign it because the Empire is absolutely on its, on its last legs at this point. There is not even a single legion with even half strength in terms of uh, sheer manpower, and he signs it. But he does have to concede stuff like batting the worship of Talos and a bunch of other terrible, humiliating terms. And one of these terms is ceding that section of Hammerfell, and this doesn't sit well with the Red Guards who want to keep up the fight. So he actually renounces Hammerfell as a province. Now, shockingly, the Red Guards actually do manage to hold out against the Thalmor and get their own separate peace treaty, which is a lot more favorable, which does lead many to launch the criticism at Titus Mead II that 
clearly if the Red Guards and Hammerfell held out against the Dominion, the Empire probably could have too with its far vaster resources. Now, the picture I've painted up until this point does certainly make the Thalmor look like this unstoppable force, but even though I don't dispute their strength, I think we might be giving them just a bit too much credit, because we need to keep in mind just how weak and how messed up the Empire was when they invaded. Um, you, of course, have it just being recent, after a huge round of civil wars which left Titus Mead the second in power. We have just sort of the continual decay from the Oblivion Crisis and just how much that took away the strength of the Empire. And those are all bad factors, but they're ones that the Empire certainly would have recovered from if it wasn't for this massive, massive destructive war. And the Thalmor themselves, well, we have reason to believe that they didn't quite think the sec the Great War would go quite the way it did, because I think it's in that one book creatively titled something like The Great War and Skyrim. It even mentions that they were sort of surprised just how much progress they made in Cyrodiil. They initially expected their attack into Cyrodiil to just be um, diversionary, while their main forces would go to Hammerfell, but they ended up making so much progress in there, they sort of changed their um, strategic objectives. Now, probably the biggest reason why I think they're not quite as strong as they are, it's if you look at their actions following the Great War, now, I have no doubt there's some arcane theological reasons for why they don't like Talos, but if you look at how it plays out in Skyrim, it seems very intent on dividing the Nords from the Empire, because the Nords are probably the strongest military province that the Empire has, and Going back to the Great War, our sources tell us about just how key the Nordic legions were to winning the Battle of the Red Ring. So, by dividing Skyrim from the Empire, that it certainly does make them far, far easier pickings in Cyrodiil later on. Now, this begs the question, if everyone is anticipating a Second Great War, why not just launch it at the Empire right now, why wait? And that does make me think that the Thalmor aren't as strong militarily as we think. But, and this is because, mainly, we spend so much time talking about all the structural weaknesses of the Empire and all the issues that they face, we sort of tend to forget to ask those questions for the Thalmor. And we know from in Skyrim, the quest where you invade the Thalmor embassy, you do have this Bosmer guy as your guy getting you informant, I guess? I, I can't do words today, but anyways, your guy that gets you inside the embassy, and Delphi mentions offhand Bosmer plenty of reasons to hate the Thalmor, and that's because the Thalmor did do periodic purges of people who didn't agree with them within Valenwood, and if it's happening there, we can only imagine that it's also happening within elsewhere, where they're also doing all manner of political mass machinations probably, and within the Somerset Isles themselves, so maybe the Thalmor aren't quite as unified as we think. So those are just sort of my two cents on it. Well, I don't deny the strength of the Thalmor. I think we do need to take a step back and look at them as we look at the Empire and maybe see that they're not quite the unstoppable juggernaut that they appear to be. That being said though, this is mostly, mostly, this is entirely speculation on my part, and aside from a few things in-game and a few hints within books in-game, uh, we really don't have much evidence to go on, so this is, this is all stuff that will 
have to be answered within a future Elder Scrolls game. So this is just my two cents on this. Be sure to let me know yours in the comments. Also, I know this has been a very rambly and incoherent video, even more so than most of them, but I figured I've got an evening. May as well get something up just to let everyone know I'm still here and I still really appreciate people having discussions in the comment sections of older videos and just still being here. So with that, I'm the Loopy Alchemist. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.